Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Women's World. Today we'll be talking about two topics. The first topic will be about uh, pandemics and uh, the state's efforts in containing the coronavirus uh, pandemic and of course uh, the vaccination campaigns that took place and how this reflected on the numbers of infections. That will be our first topic for today. The second topic, we will be celebrating Egyptian uh, athlete uh, Basant Tehmeda uh, for her achievements in Algeria. And that will be, of course, uh, shedding more light on that topic with a special uh, report. Now, we're going to start with the main topic for today with our guest, Dr. Yasmin Abu Zaid, Associate Professor of Pharmaceutics and Industrial Pharmacy, Faculty of Pharmacy, Helwan University. Thank you very much, Dr. Yasmin, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me to this program. Now, um, to start with how you evaluate uh, the current situation of uh, the pandemic, if we're talking locally and globally. Okay, first, uh, if you just double check since we started COVID-19 uh, in December 2019, so uh, it was like a huge pandemic, so you can find many people, millions actually of people died due to this virus. And later on, when they start to uh, announce that they can, ma uh, they actually managed to manufacture the vaccines, and we have now around six types of vaccines, and they are they were distributed uh, in different countries all over the world. So you can find that the rate of of infection starts to be contained, and the virus itself starts to be contained. Mm -hmm. So and you can find um, this rate start to increase as well, um, and the recovery will from the infection become like. Um, if anyone similar to if anyone actually infected by influenza or mm. just co come cold so yes. it's, it's much better now yes uh, what are the signs or symptoms of recovery okay um, it depends because it differ actually f it differs from a uh, person to another so you can find that um, uh, since you got the infection, so all the people start um, uh, to feel exactly the same symptoms like uh, general uh, muscular pain, difficulty in breathing, and so on. And mm. when they, uh, and also the temperature fever. start to increase. Yeah. So after a while, um, around 10 days, the fever starts to decrease. So the temperature becomes or goes back again to the normal uh, body temperature, which is, which is around 37 or so. Uh, but still, the person feels some muscular pain and also difficulty of breathing. And actually, they recover uh, gradually by time, and it differs from person to person. So, might uh, in a couple of months, they start uh, people start to recover, while other people actually takes um, a year or so. Even recovery of the test. Uh, so you can find some people actually recover the test uh, ability of the after like uh, two weeks or so, mm. while other people actually stays for a year. Yes. Yeah. And 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 it, it, even when, it, when the, the, the sense comes back, it's not the same because yeah. uh, I have seen some cases where people did not know that they had COVID in the first place, but they didn't show any symptoms except exhaustion or so. But then uh, they started tasting the food and it, in it a tastes different way. weird. Yes. yes. And they didn't know what, what's that. They didn't know even that they got infected. Yeah, because it depends on the immune system of the human body. So everyone has its own immune system, which is different uh, than the other person. So my, my immune system is more powerful. So when I got infected, okay, my immune system starts to deal with the virus and they start to contain the virus itself. So you can't show uh, many symptoms like other people who have like weak immune system. So yeah, it differs from person to person. Yes. Uh, for the past two years, um, uh, the Egyptian government has been exerting huge efforts in containing yeah. the virus and uh, the Ministry of Health in particular. We have seen uh, the vaccination centers <coughs> all over uh, the country. Uh, uh, the ministry was sending uh, SMSs to the citizens on their mobiles with the dates of their vaccination yeah. and uh, providing mobile uh, clinics everywhere, even in, in main events. How do you see all these efforts? Actually, it's a great efforts. Come on, mm. uh, you can you, you manage. Actually, the government managed to contain the virus in a very very limited time. I think that they they did massive effort to do this. So mm. you can find at universities, schools, uh, work uh, places. So you can find at everywhere you have like a mobile car where you can get a vaccine uh, and you, you skip like um, crowdness of the people so everything were highly organized and this is actually um, I guess this is like a secret of success uh, mm. in containing the virus in a very limited time. Mm. How far is the vaccine effective in containing the virus? 
because we all know that it does not prevent the infection. Yeah. But how far does it uh, cut down the number of infections? Okay, um, let me first explain how the infection goes on in a very simple way. So when you when any person got infected with a virus or bacteria or whatever, so the immune system starts to be alert that a foreign body is inside your biological system. And then they start to uh, send like a signal mm -hmm. or a message, um, enhances or calling a certain type of, of cells from the immune system to come and recognize this virus or bacteria. And then after they start to attack it and destroy it. Okay, mm. so when you vaccinate a person, it means that you start to potentiate its memory because mm. now the at least the immune system start to uh, understand that these bodies or this particular uh, um, specific part is is actually related to the virus. So mm. when you got, when any person got infected with the virus again, so the immune system is already knowing in the memory that this is a virus. So it start. Uh, very fast and quickly to attack the virus and contain it. That's why um, the symptoms period start to decrease and the number of people is actually infected or become susceptible to infection start to decrease as well. Mm. We have seen waves of pandemics um, in the <laughs> past and um, uh, we have seen SARS for example that was before COVID-19 in so many years now the COVID-19 monkeypox what is the situation of uh, pandemics and how can we differentiate pandemics from epidemics? Okay, uh, according to WHO since 2014, mm -hmm. they actually um, have like a future version that saying and they announced it, uh, announced it actually in 2014 in publish it I guess in some presses or medical uh, journals saying that all the future infections might be related to viruses only mm -hmm. and this is most tricky because you can't find a treatment for the virus, but you can find a treatment like for bacteria, so you have plenty of antibiotics. Okay, regardless of the problem of resistance to antibiotics, but you still have some medication which can uh, exactly attack the bacteria. But for viruses, it's difficult to provide like a certain type of medication to treat these viruses because mm. the virus mutated very quickly and actually all the people now become familiar with this since we start to face the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. So it starts with a certain strain and then it moves uh, producing different types of strains because viruses start to change itself in a way to defend his presence in the biological system so they can evade the attack of the immune system. And this is actually the problem of viral infections. And we are worried that all the next future, uh, all the world actually will face a problem of viral infection, unfortunately. And this actually appears with um, the monkeys, uh, monkeypox. Yeah, monkeypox viruses. Mm. And who knows, might be something new uh, occur. So now from the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 pandemic, the people actually start to uh, be aware about um, uh, like uh, first first precautions they have they have to take when any different types of viruses what uh, kind just of come out. That so mean? first of all that you need to confess that we have a problem because the problem in China or in the previous COVID-19 China knows that was not acknowledging yeah. that there was something wrong in the first yeah, place. So the United States took few months until it recognized yeah the so so the people start uh, they, they tried to actually to contain the information they, they tried to hide it so the people actually traveling from a uh, country to another so the virus is spread everywhere now we've learned that when something just new occurs so you have to, go to accept and confess that we have a problem uh, and so from we this we can it. contain it mm. so you can just um, lock the area from any people to come out or to come in in this area so by this you can just uh, minimize the possibility of uh, spreading of the infection okay um what is the importance of using nanotechnology in cutting down uh, uh the infections and and limiting down the spread of pandemics okay um as i said before that uh, the problem with the viral infection is that you it's hard to find like a medication specific to uh to viral infection so nanotechnology is works in a different way so they start to control or limit the infection spread so um i have like a project research project by myself where i used um a specific type of nanoparticles which are actually approved by FDA so they use it for treatment of anemia its its name is um, iron oxide nanoparticles so what you are trying to do with this nanoparticles is that we treat uh, a fabrics with this type of nanoparticles and we tested uh, the antibacterial activity and anti antiviral activity of these fabrics um, 
against SARS-CoV-2 and different type of bacteria in, uh, in hospitals, in Egyptian hospitals. And we found they, they, they are effective, so they can kill the viruses and uh, the bacteria. And they are not so specific to certain type of virus and bacteria. So by this, in the future, if you want to contain any type of infection, so just you need to, to be precaution, uh, or to, or to, sorry, to exert some precaution to the medical uh, health care providers. So just by um, designing uh, specific protective codes, or you use special sheets, so you can minimize the spread of the virus. Yes. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yasmin Abu Zaid, Associate Professor of Pharmaceutics and Industrial Pharmacy, Faculty of Pharmacy, Helwan University. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving to another topic, uh, the uh, achievement of Basant Hamida in Oran, Algeria. We'll watch a special report and we'll be right back. انت عم فتح علي الاير بي Marking the very first time an Egyptian athlete brings home a gold medal for a 100-meter dash, Basant Hamida has won gold for her 100-meter sprint in the Mediterranean Games in Oran 2022, hosted in Algeria. This constitutes the sixth gold medal for Egypt during the Games. Hamida claimed first place in the race with a time span of 11 seconds and 10 milliseconds. It is universally acknowledged that 100-meter sprint races are notoriously difficult events in the sport of athletics. Athletes are required to run the short distance at record time, displaying exceptional physical prowess. In a heartfelt post on Instagram, the player shared her achievement by saying, Words fail to express how I feel when I think of all of you. Thanking you is not enough. You have given without waiting, forgiven without apology, and supported me all throughout this journey. Prior to the Tokyo Olympics, Basant Hamida has announced that she will not be participating in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics due to injury. Basant had suffered an injury during her training in Cairo camp and her preparations for the Olympics during that time. Basant Hamida Abdus Salam was born on the 28th of September 1996. She won two medals at the 2019 African Games. She holds her country's national records in the 100 and 200 meters. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, to know more about this achievement, uh, as Basant Hamida uh, brought home the gold medal for the 100-meter uh, dash, and she has won the gold for her 100-meter sprint in the Mediterranean Games uh, held in Oran 2022 in Algeria. A very important achievement that we, as Egyptians and as women, of course, are very proud of. We needed to shed more light on this achievement here in our program. Uh, we're very much delighted to have with us over the phone uh, Mr. Mohamed Rashad, a sports critic, to tell us more about it. Good morning to you, Mr. Mohamed. Good morning, Mr. Mohamed. Good 
Good morning, sir. How are you? Uh, how do you see this achievement by Basant Hamida? Uh, you know, Basant Hamida she made make us proud, very proud, because she with the best things she yeah, do, and she we hope after ten days she will going to participate in the world champion, and we hope she have got a medal. She participated in this uh, competition, and she was very she was uh, injured. And uh, now she has two medals, and she is coaches his uh, his two husband. And you know, is uh, if you achieve, you have a goal, and you succeed, and you have all many sacrifice and hard work. At the end, you have you you see what should happen. And uh, she is uh, she married, and she have uh, 25 years. She is uh, in engineering. She is a doctor in uh, in, uh, in Alexandria, and uh, he, she is the first woman, Egyptian woman, to have to uh, participate in these mm -hmm. uh, competitions and have two medals. And she succeed, and we hope she continues to succeed. And uh, she making us proud, you know, because what she did and uh, she ranking in the world, she and break his record now in, uh, and deal for Egypt. Because the last road is was in for, from French, the French uh, uh, participating. And we hope she make us very proud and still proud of her. Of course. Uh, yes, indeed, you're very right. We are very proud of her and uh, uh, the support of her husband, of course, uh, also who is her coach at the same time, makes all the difference. Always the support of uh, men to women, uh, push them forward. Women are capable of achieving miracles on their own, of course, but with the support of everyone, with the support of the people who love them, miracles can be achieved. I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohammad Rashad, our sports critic, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of Women's World. I'm Halal Hamalawi, signing off for now.